Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're here to learn about the latest uh, findings from our statewide survey. S the survey was released uh, last night, uh, which examined California's, Californians' outlook on the future. Uh, I'm Mark Baldessari, President and CEO and Survey Director of the Public Policy Institute of California. For those of you who aren't familiar with the organization, PPIC is an independent, nonpartisan think tank based in San Francisco with an office here in Sacramento. The event is part of the James Irvine Foundation briefing series, and we would like to thank the Irvine Foundation for making it possible to bring this event to you today. This particular survey on Californians in the future is part of a broader project that we are doing on California's future. Um, and this survey was supported with funding from the S.D. Bechtel Jr. Foundation, the San Francisco Foundation, the David and Susan Coulter Foundation, and the Walter S. Johnson Foundation. And we would like to thank them for their generous support on this important work. You will find a handout with some key findings on your chair. At least I hope you have that. I see one under the chair here, but that's for you. OK. And uh, the full report may be found on the PPIC website as www.ppic.org, as well as the slides from today's presentation. Additionally, please check out the statewide survey interactive tools feature on, featured on our website, where you can look up all the questions that were asked in the survey and in previous surveys and uh, also create your own cross-tabs uh, that go beyond what is reported um, in, uh, in our uh, studies report. I also would like to mention to uh, mark your calendar for an upcoming event. If you happen to be able to go to San Francisco on December 11th, this uh, coming Tuesday, PPIC will host an event um, which will explore the outcome of the November election and its implications for California's future. Southern California Public Radio host and producer Warren Olney will moderate this discussion between San Francisco Chronicle columnist Deborah Saunders and nationally syndicated columnist and political commentator Mark Shields. It should be really interesting. That will take place uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. on um, this coming Tuesday, December 11th, at our San Francisco headquarters. The event is almost at capacity, but you, you may also join us via the live webcast if you can't make it to San Francisco. So please visit www.ppic.org for more information and to register. Before we begin a couple of housekeeping issues, please turn off or silence your cell phones. This is always for me, so I'll make sure to do that. And please do the same. Um, and also, you should have received an evaluation survey on your chair, and we ask that you fill this out and drop it off uh, at the registration table. This is very helpful to us when planning future events, and also the way that you can get some extra cookies on the way out, so <laughs> please do it. Now on to today's program. First, I'm going to start by uh, making a brief presentation on the key findings from one part of the survey, and then I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Jui Shrestha. Uh, after the presentation, we'll both uh, be up here and happy to take questions uh, from the audience. So let's talk about the survey that, came, that uh, we conducted um, on Californians and the future. First of all, um, part of ongoing surveys that, as you know, we conducted uh, all this year um, before the election, and we felt that it was really going to be timely and informative to have something that we produced right after the election. So um, as part of our Californians in the Future series, we conducted a survey that looks at uh, the state's current and future outlook. Uh, from the voters, uh, from the from the residents' perspective, uh, how people feel about uh, passing Proposition 30, which was obviously a big deal, um, and some of the long-term issues that the state faces, both in terms of um, our higher education system and water policy. Those are two issues which um, our folks at PPIC have been tracking very closely, and uh, we wanted to make that part of this. Uh, Californians in the Future series. 
We lo also look at a number of fiscal and governance uh, reforms in light of the um, post-election climate in California, uh, in particular uh, Prop 13, which as you know passed in 1978, um, reducing property taxes in California, um, and electoral, legislative, spending, fiscal, and initiative process reforms. So you will be hearing from my colleague Shui on those uh, fiscal and governance reforms. So our presentation today is based upon um, telephone interviews, both landline and cell phone, um, in both English and Spanish that were conducted um, starting about a week after the election and continuing for, um, for eight days between November 13th and 20th with 2001 adults, of whom, based upon their responses in the survey, we identified 1,025 uh, of those adults who would be likely voters, that is, people who would, you would expect to be in election, uh, voting in elections based upon the responses they gave in the survey. The margin of error for all adults, three and a half, and for likely voters, four uh, percent. So some of the findings on planning for the future that, uh, that particularly attracted um, our interest um, was, first of all, a significant increase in optimism about the future in California. We've asked a survey uh, a couple of different times prior to this um, December survey about how people felt about California looking out into the, uh, the, the, the middle of the 2020s. Did they think it would be a better place or a worse place uh, or no change? Uh, when we've asked this question in the past, there have always been more people who said, um, worse place uh, and then better place. Um, that, but what we're seeing in our survey this time is that people, there are more people saying that they're optimistic about California's future than, uh, than saying that they are pessimistic uh, about it. And that is a significant change. And what, if you look further into our data in our report, what is, um, very interesting about it is that there's a difference between Democrats and Republicans. Uh, Democrats more optimistic than, uh, than, and Republicans more pessimistic. But beyond that, there's some very interesting um, demographic differences. For instance, um, Asians and Latinos much more likely to say better place than worse place. Uh, whites in California divided between saying better place and worse place. Younger Californians, much more likely to say better place than worse place. Uh, Californians 55 and older, um, evenly divided between saying it's going to be a better place or a worse place in the future. The, uh, the current outlook in California, also increasingly positive, not in, not in a uh, proportionally more positive than negative direction, but still more positive than we've seen. As we can see, uh, over time, there have been a significant increase uh, this year, and certainly compared to where we were a year ago, in the number of Californians who say that the state is headed in the right direction. A year ago, uh, last December, when we were here, 30 31% saying the state is heading in the right direction. Today, that number is at 44%. Similarly, the number of people who expect economic uh, good times uh, has increased uh, by 11 points since a year ago. So significant increases in optimism, but still, you know, more people saying they're pessimistic than op optimistic. But the direction is clear. Approval ratings for the governor and the legislature have also um, improved compared to a year ago and even compared to earlier this year. We're now seeing the approval rating of Governor Brown at the highest point um, that, that we've seen it, at 48% uh, among all adults and 49% among likely voters. The legislature um, still not close to uh, 50% uh, or even 40% for that matter, but improved. You know, once again, the trend is towards better ratings um, uh, and, and uh, more positive reactions. Um, certainly differences between Democrats and Republicans on 
the measures of the governor um, as well as the legislature. When we look at how people feel about uh, the, the, the governor and the state's abilities to plan for the future, the results are pretty comparable um, towards, uh, you know, to what people say overall about the governor and legislature and their approval ratings. Not really uh, much of a difference. Uh, to some degree, um, you know, a, a little bit more negativity, but, uh, but not much. Pretty similar ratings. Um, this we, we thought was a very important finding for a survey that was uh, that started about a week after the election. You know, from from the Californians' point of view, what is the meaning of the fact that Proposition 30 uh, passed? And by a two-to-one margin, Californians said that passing Proposition 30 on the November ballot made them more rather than less optimistic. So. Um, the number of Californians who said that it made them more, pe more optimistic, um, not quite at 50%, but 46% more pessimistic, 23%, 28% said it didn't change the way they felt about um, the California budget situation. But that certainly is something that's contributing to the more positive um, feelings about the current outlook and the future outlook in the state and how people are feeling about um, the leadership. Big difference, once again, between Democrats and Republicans. 60% of Democrats said more optimistic. 50% of Republicans said more pessimistic. When we uh, take a look at um, the higher education system in California and um, what, it, what, it, uh, what it means to the state, um, recognizing that Prop 30, uh, built into Prop 30 was, uh, you know, was some funding uh, that would be available not just for K through 12, but for higher ed or, or, the, or the, taking away the uh, possibilities of um, further cuts to higher ed. What, uh, what, are, what, what are people's current feelings about the problems that are facing higher education in the state? Um, about two thirds continue to say that overall affordability is a big problem. Um, that is a number that we, um, you know, we have seen creeping up in terms of, of how Californians view the affordability of higher education. Uh, in fact, that's the highest number that we've seen uh, over the course of every year we've asked that question since 2007. Um, while the overall state budget situation for higher education improved as a result of Prop 30. Still a lot of Californians saying that the, um, the state budget situation is a big problem, 64%. I mean, that's down some from what we saw a few years, uh, you know, we're seeing a few years ago when the state budget situation first started to impact higher education. But that's still a lot of people who are saying that um, higher education uh, and state budget, uh, the state budget problem is a big, uh, a big problem. We uh, repeated a question which we asked in 2007 about accessibility because there's a lot of, been a lot of discussion about you know, ability to take classes, get into the system as opposed to how much it costs once you're a part of it. And uh, compared to affordability in the state budget situation, accessibility named by fewer people um, as a problem at 43%, but I want you to see what this line graph looks like. We've only asked the question on accessibility twice in October 2007 and, and in this uh, survey this month, and we saw um, an increase of 19 points in the numbers of, uh, of Californians, the proportion of Californians who say that accessibility, the ability to get into the higher education system in the state is a big problem, and that's why we think that this is an important finding to, to highlight. As we think about the future of um, uh, the state's higher education system, um, it's very important to get a sense of, uh, of, of, of how this fits into the Californians' uh, views of, um, of what they would like to see take place in their own family. So we asked a question which we have uh, repeated from previous surveys 
about um, whether uh, what people's hopes were for uh, for their own children, and specifically we pointed to um, the youngest child, so, so that we could we could you know identify someone, and you'll note in our survey that um, over the overwhelming sentiment is that you know that that a four-year college degree or a graduate degree is what Californians hope uh, will um, will be the outcome uh, for their uh, for their own uh, uh, children, and this is a feeling which really uh, you know uh, most individuals, whatever their income group is, their race and ethnicity, what part of the state they live in, they, those are their expectations. Relatively few saying that um, high school or two-year college um, is uh, is good enough. And in fact, what was really interesting in our survey is that um, you know this strong number of, of, of people now who are saying that um, they think that um, a graduate degree after college is 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 what they hope for. Fifty fifty one percent mentioning that number. Among Latino parents. Uh, the, the numbers saying uh, four-year college or graduate degree, 83%, very similar to uh, overall the overall population. What's really interesting in our survey among Latino parents, and just um, just the last since the last time we asked this question in November 2011, there was a 17-point increase from 29% to 46% of Latino parents who say that um, graduate uh, school graduate degree after college, what they uh, hope and aspire uh, for, for their children. Very interesting. In terms of where the public higher education system fits into people's uh, overall view of the future of the state, um, we have consistently found that Californians view higher education as very important to the quality of life and economic vitality of California. That's been consistent in every survey we've, uh, we've done every year since 2007, uh, seven, over 70 percent. What was interesting about this year, again in the post-30 post, uh, uh, context, is that there was an uptick in the number of Californians who say that higher education is very important, now up to uh, 85 percent. and. This is a, a perception that is shared across um, demographic groups, partisan groups, um, and regions of the state, the belief that higher education is very important. And um, also the belief that what we're doing now um, in terms of California's higher education will not be producing enough college-educated residents for uh, the future of California. Majorities of adults acro across parties and across most groups and regions of the state saying that they don't feel that we're going to, that we're uh, producing enough college graduates um, in this state for the type of economy that, um, that we're going to have in the state. So there's a, a belief which I think leads to the, the, the nature of the, uh, the views of the problem as well as the importance of higher education that um, we're, we're, we're not doing enough um, to have uh, college educated residents given where the job skills um, are likely um, to be in the future. And about half of Californians say that they have confidence in our state government's ability to plan for higher education, but a half, about half of them say they don't. They have very little or no confidence. So um, Californians, you know, not feeling particularly, um, uh, you know, positive about the state's ability to move forward and, and have a strong higher education system. Um, Democrats more likely to believe that the state uh, will be able to handle this issue than independents and especially Republicans. Um, Asians and Latinos have more confidence um, in the state's abilities to plan for the future of higher education than do whites. 
Last but not least, we took a look at uh, water policy in terms of planning for the future. Many Californians believe that um, the supply of water continues to be a big problem or somewhat of a problem. Even as we get rains in the state, people recognize that, uh, that, that water is uh, something which um, you know, continues to, to generate concerns and, uh, about the ability to plan. And those uh, who live in the Central Valley of the state much more likely than those who live um, in the San Francisco area to believe that the supply of water, uh, to perceive that that's a problem in their part of California. Those, those in, uh, in, in the inland area of, La, of um, California outside of Los Angeles, the inland area in Orange and San Diego also more likely to say this is a big problem. When it comes to how people would like to resolve the water issues um, in our state, we found that Californians were evenly divided, just about 50-50, on the question of whether we should be increasing the supply or we should be trying to do things to reduce the demand. Should we be conserving or should we be uh, uh, storing more water? Um, Californians were evenly divided on that uh, issue. and. Um, Central Valley residents uh, divided. Bay Area residents more likely to uh, favor conservation and new storage, and the other major regions of the state uh, pretty divided on that. We've asked this question a number of, time, a number of times, and what we, we have seen is that um, there, while there in the past had been a greater divide with more people saying conservation, fewer people saying um, new storage and increase the supply that over time that there's been uh, less of a margin of difference and now we only have a three point difference between that, suggesting that people are pretty divided about water policy. One of the big issues around the Delta and other parts of the state and, increase, uh, and, and taking care of our water needs has been uh, native species. So we asked a question on um, the degree to which Californians were in favor of, um, of, uh, of taking uh, steps to improve conditions for uh, native fish. And majorities uh, overall in the state, six and 10, said that they were with differences across party lines on this question. Um, but when it came to willingness to pay, which is a theme we'll, we'll pick up on in our next um, uh, part of the survey, when it came to the issue of willingness to pay, that number dropped below 50% to around 40%, um, even among Democrats who more strongly support this. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Shui, who will talk about the next section of the survey. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, and thank you all for joining us today. As Mark mentioned, in this section, we examine attitudes towards recent electoral reforms, as well as um, proposed reforms towards changing the legislative structure and the state spending, as well as the initiative process and ways to expand the tax base. Two key electoral reforms came into play in this election season. The first change was approved by voters in 2008 by passing Proposition 11. Um, Proposition 11 established an independent citizens commission to handle re redistricting rather than having the legislature and the governor handle these decisions. We find that nearly six in 10 adults and likely voters say that having passed Proposition 11 has turned out to be a good thing for California. Interestingly, those who approve of the performance of the governor and the legislature are more likely to say that having passed Proposition 11 has been mostly a good thing than those who say that they disapprove of the governor and the legislature's job performance. The second electoral reform that um, that came into play in the June and November elections is the top two primary system which was passed by voters through the passage of Proposition 14 in 2010. This changed California's primary system from a partially closed one to a top two system whereby voters cast primary ballots for 
any candidate regardless of party and the two candidates receiving most votes, again, regardless of party, advance on to the general e elections. We find that six in 10 adults and likely voters consider having passed Proposition 14 to be mostly a good thing for California. Across parties, Democrats and independents are much more likely to hold this view than Republicans. Next, we looked at three different types of legislative reforms. When Californians were asked about changing the status of the state legislature from being a full-time to a part-time one, Californians were divided with 48% saying that this was a good idea and 45 saying that this was a bad idea. Californians were more likely to say that this was a bad idea when we asked this question last September. And across parties, Republicans are far more likely to say that a part-time legislature is a good idea compared to the other parties. Looking at two other legislative reform proposals, about half consider changing the California legislature from having two houses to a single one with 120 members to be a bad idea, and about 36% say that this is a good idea. Another reform proposal that, like the unicameral legislature, would, in, would result in each legislature representing fewer people is to simply increase the number of legislators in the, in the state legislature. And again, about half say that this is a bad idea, and four in 10 consider it a good idea. Then we looked at a series of fiscal reform proposals which would address issues in the state budget as well as local budget issues. On the idea of requiring major new and expanded state programs as well as tax reductions, having to identify a specific funding source, about eight in 10 say that this is a good idea and seven in 10 consider increasing the size of the state's rainy day fund and have above average revenues be deposited into it to use during economic downturns to be a good idea. And when we asked about strictly limiting the amount that state spending could increase each year, about two in three say that this is a good idea. There is majority support for changing the current one-year budget cycle to a two-year budget cycle, with 56% saying this is a good idea and 36% saying that this is a bad idea. The two-year budget cycle, along with the requirement of having new programs identify a specific funding source, were components of Proposition 31 that failed to pass this November. In our pre-election surveys, we found that there was a lack of understanding regarding Proposition 31 with high shares saying they were unsure as to how they would vote on the measure. The two other fiscal reform proposals that we asked about have to do with lowering the vote thresholds to pass taxes that are currently in place due to Proposition 13. We find that there is majority support for lowering the vote to pass local special taxes from a two-thirds vote to 55%. Um, this proposal would mean that the vote threshold would match what is currently required to pass local school bonds. About half also support changing the vote requirement from a two-thirds vote to a simple majority for the legislature to pass state taxes. There have been periodic talks of changing the property tax limits set by Proposition 13, and since February 2003, which marked the 25th anniversary of the passage of Proposition 13, we have been asking Californians to generally assess how they feel about having passed Proposition 13. And we have found that Californians have highly favorable in impressions of having passed Proposition 13, with six in 10 saying that this has been mostly a good thing for California, and about three in 10 saying that this has been mostly a bad thing. In all of our surveys, we have found that majorities, uh, we found majorities saying that this has been a good thing, except in one survey, but even then a plurality said that it has been a good thing. However, Californians are, they give a more mixed review on 
Prop 13's effect on the provision of local services. Uh, plurality at 36% say that there has been no effect on local government services due to tax restrictions placed by Proposition 13. Similar shares say that there have been good effects as bad effects. Across parties, Democrats are more likely to say that there have been bad effects, while Republicans and Independents say that there have been no effects. But even Republicans and Independents are more likely to say that that the effects have been good than bad. In our earlier surveys, we find that less than two, less than four in ten, um, have said that the local impacts of Proposition 13 have led to good effects. A Prop 13 reform that has now become a possibility because of the Democrats gaining a two-thirds majority in the legislature is the so-called split rule property tax that would change how commercial property taxes are assessed. When we ask Californians how they feel about having commercial properties taxed according to their current market value, majorities are in favor with 57% holding this view and 36% saying that they oppose. Even among residents who say that Prop Proposition 13 have been mostly a good thing for California, 56% are in favor of the split rural property tax. With voters having just passed the Proposition 30 tax measure, we asked how they felt about raising other taxes on themselves and find that strong majorities oppose ex extending the sales tax to services that are currently not taxed and more than seven in 10 oppose raising the vehicle license fee. At 65%, the opposition to extending the sales taxes matches the record high reached in May 2007, while opposition's opposition to increasing the vehicle license fee is at a record high today. In this general election, voters weighed in on 11 state propositions, all of which was placed on the ballot through the initiative process. When asked to assess the public policy decisions made through the initiative process, about six in 10 say that the, these decisions made by voters are probably better than the public policy decisions made by the governor and the legislature, and about one in four say that these decisions are probably worse. This finding is very consistent with findings in our past surveys when we have asked this question. While satisfied with the public policy decisions made through the initiative process, Californians are receptive to improvements in the initiative process. We asked a new question on requiring both the yes and no campaigns for initiatives to increase disclosure of their contributors and find that three in four adults are in favor of this idea. And on requiring voters to renew initiatives after a certain number of years by voting on them again, um, support seven in 10 adults say that they favor this idea. The last reform proposal that we looked at in the survey has to do with allowing the legislature with the governor's approval to amend initiatives after a certain number of years. And on this one, Californians are divided with 48% saying they favor and 45% saying that they oppose, um, while likely voters are more likely to oppose. We also see that Republicans are for, far more likely to oppose this idea than Democrats or independents. And this brings us to the end of our discussion on several types of reform proposals. And Mark will be here to offer some concluding remarks on the survey. Once again, I would like to thank you for joining us today and hope to have you here for future events in the new year.